good evening everyone uh, representing medicine 3 i am bobby hudson uh, the weight of a broken heart uh, coming to the history of our patient she is a 27 year old young lady who has presented with complaints of uh, fever since past uh, two months which is february last week of february with low grade fever intermittent subsiding with over the counter medication the other symptoms associated with the fever was only tiredness uh, she kept on taking the over the counter medication but however on march 26 Uh, in view of her low grade fever along with her uh, missing uh, menstrual cycle she uh, decided to go to a local hospital where she was incidentally detected to be a uh, pregnant with a 8 weeks gestational age so on her antenatal investigations she again was found to have an anemia of uh, 5 g hemoglobin and then uh, the local government hospital she was transfused <clears throat> with three units of blood on uh, three separate days however post 24 hours post transfusion uh, she started high grade fever uh, Uh, intermittent again uh, getting treatment in the local hospitals with iv paracetamol and uh, other antibiotics for for whom the documents were not available uh, but on 6th of april she started uh, along with the fever she had a sudden onset of breathlessness with pervaginal bleeding so for this again she went to a local hospital where she was found to have a jaundice of a total bilirubin of 9 and an incomplete abortion was there products were uh, seen expelling out of her vagina so she was underwent an uh, uh, incomplete abortion there and she was referred to cmc for further management coming to the past history uh, coming to the other uh, complaints she didn't have any symptoms of any joint pain recurrent oral ulcers she didn't have any history of a uh, skin rash uh, her menstrual cycles were regular and her lmp was on uh, january 28th there was no relevant family history uh, coming to the significance of the past history there was a history of anemia during childhood only once she was during her age standard during which she under had uh, underwent one episode of uh, blood transfusion coming to the examination in ed she was conscious oriented but she presented with a hypotension her bp was only 70 by 50 however it was fluid responsive uh, and after a fluid challenge it was uh, it has come up to 120 by 80 but her pulse rate was 140 which was regular and her uh, respiratory rate was 45 and her saturation at the time of presentation was 84 on niv it picked up to 100% and she was febrile at the time of presentation but on clinical examination she had an ictus also Uh, other systemic examination was normal uh, except for the uh, uh, ex- products which were felt at the os on pv examination so the clinical syndrome was a chronic fever for more than 2 months with a low grade fever initially to begin with which has become a uh, uh, high high grade intermittent with no other localizing features but uh, one day episode of bleeding pervagina and hypotension and sudden onset of breathlessness with a jaundice so our differential diagnosis at that point of time was uh, that the patient has presented with a septic shock with a multi organ dysfunction because uh, 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 she had a clinical exam on clinical examination she had a jaundice also and she had a uh, uh, further evaluation revealed that she had uh, presented with an aki these are this, her uh, investigation so this is not a differential no this is a in common pathway for n number of things so do you want to tell us what is wrong with her she presented with a septic abortion at the point of view. sepsis she okay. that's something to put here no you feel that the source of infection could be this or something else you want to hide that information is it mm-hmm. you want to come to it later yes sir Uh, coming to our uh, initial evaluation, uh, it showed an elevated counts of fifty thousand nine hundred with a uh, AKI. Her baseline creatinine was point nine when they, when she underwent her an- antenatal examination, but her creatinine at the time of presentation ED was one point seven. Uh, there was an elevated abnormality in the liver function test with a total bilirubin of seven point seven also, and with an elevated alkaline phosphatase. Further course in CMC, she was as she presented with a sepsis. Uh, immediately she was seen by obstetricians in the ED. and she was taken to an emergency or for a manual vacuum uh, uh, ma- manual vacuum aspiration but uh, in the or since she was in respiratory distress she was intubated and she was shifted to an sic on 6 uh, after shifting to the sic also she started continuing having high grade fevers uh, in view of high grade fevers along with the uh, past history of fever, chronic fever an omc consult and the medicine opinion was taken for which a po worker was uh, suggested initially so her blood cultures uh, were taken on the day of admission 6th but however when she reached the ssu in the in, on the evening of the 7th only a blood culture grew a staff or years for which the sensitivity was evaded however other po workup was also done on 7th uh, from the ssu uh, which included the uh, ruling out of other uh, autoimmune diseases and bone marrow 
but eighth the fever still persisted even on uh, high end antibiotics and on eighth on clinical examination during the round she was noted to found, found to have a petechiae or bilateral lower limbs and she had a sudden desaturation with increased dinotrope uh, requirement uh, because of this a bedside echo was done which showed a doubtful vegetations by the uh, icu registers and uh, ct thorax was also done because of a sudden desaturation and to rule out other causes which showed a splenic and a renal impact and hence an omc consult was taken and omc uh, has decided to take over the patient uh, further course uh, an official cardiology opinion was taken and a uh, a bedside echo was done in the SICU, uh, during which initial two times the echo did not show any vegetations, uh, but uh, blood cultures continued to show uh, uh, staph areas, which were uh, methylene sensitive staph areas. So clinical picture again working up uh, with the past history of chronic fever and no other features of any autoimmune diseases or no other features of any malignancy. Uh, the, the patient, in, because of the clinical uh, evidence of high grade fevers and continuous bacteremia with the positive blood cultures, she was suspected to have an infective endocarditis, even though the trans uh, thoracic echo was uh, normal. Uh, these are her blood cultures. Uh, but uh, these echo pictures are later are from a later date. This was done on our 20th. Her admission was on 6th April, but this was a vegetation which was shown on the uh, echo on 20th. Coming to the infective endocarditis, infective endocarditis is, uh, as everyone knows, is a infection of the endocardial surface of the heart. The most common symptoms include the fever, which is seen in 80 to 95 percent associated with chills. Other symptoms that is seen in 40 to 50 percent is the weakness. Uh, other atypical manifestations of uh, infective endocarditis like Oscar nodes, which are painful, erythematous nodal lesions seen in the pulp of the fingers and the tones, and the Janeway lesions are painless hemorrhagic erythematous macules are absent in our patient on examination. The diagnosis of infective endocarditis, as everyone knows, again, uh, is mainly dependent on the blood culture and the imaging also helps to it. Uh, coming to the blood, uh, principles of collecting the blood culture, bac bacteria in infective endocarditis is continuous, so cultures need not to be taken with the peaks of fever. It can be taken at any time, but preferably uh, prior to the antibiotic start. Three sets of blood culture should be done at least 30 minute intervals before the initiation of the antibiotics. And the typical organisms expected with infective endocarditis include Staph aureus, Staph lugnanius, Enterococcus fecalis, and all other streptococcal species, except for streptococcus pneumonia and pyogenes and other HESIC organisms. So what is our interest in this uh, particular patient uh, as an OMC or a medicine is, uh, what is the in incidence of infective endocarditis? We see very regularly, we might be seeing them in an adult population, but what is the incident of uh, infective endocarditis in pregnant ladies? And how are the other risk factors are different from uh, infective endocarditis in a non-pregnant patients and the pregnant patients? And what are the maternal and the fatal outcomes and how should we go ahead and treat the patients, uh, uh, such patients in pregnancy? Our uh, further, uh, she pregnant? sir, she is a pregnant lady. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Of what? My doctor. Our literature uh, review worked up showed that the infective endocarditis in a pregnancy is only uh, the incidence is only less than zero point zero one percent. And uh, the risk factors we looked at, we looked into the literature and went into the systematic review, which was done from uh, two thousand four to two thousand twelve, which showed uh, that. The risk factors are almost the same to the of the general population. Uh, the first thing mainly being the intravenous drug administration, uh, congenital heart disease being the second one, and the rheumatic heart disease seen in the third one. Uh, coming to the, uh, we looked into the further literature to see outcome of the endocarditis in the pregnancy and the organism which are most commonly associated with them. In both the non-pregnant and the pregnant uh, uh, ladies, uh, it is almost the first most common organism is the uh, methylene sensitive uh, staph aureus uh, followed by MRSA. Uh, like we have discussed in the uh, previous questions, like how do you manage the infective endocarditis? Uh, we have looked into the uh, any other further literature, but we couldn't find any uh, case uh, systematic review or any RCTs or any other interesting studies. But all we have found was few case reports, and this is the largest uh, case series that we have found. Uh, this included a, a case series study from 2014 to 2021, where the average age of delivery uh, among the uh, pregnant ladies uh, diagnosed with infective endocarditis, the mean age was around 29.3 years, and the most common cause in most of them was the injection drug use, and uh, only two of them had a, a history of endocarditis. Uh, this is in pre-antenatal, uh, uh, not the postpartum, this is in the peripartum. 
and the coming to the type of endocarditis most of them had a, a tricuspid regurgitation and followed by the mitral regurgitation uh, unlike the routine ones where we see uh, many of them having the mitral regurgitation more common than the uh, tricuspid and most of these uh, case series uh, patients had a uh, mm msa uh, staph aureus as a chief organism and uh, three of them had an embolic phenomenon uh, where uh, three of them had a uh, stroke acute cva and uh, five of them had a pulmonary uh, septic emboli, both stroke and the pulmonary uh, septic emboli. Uh, all the out of, uh, most of them, 83% had an ICU admission and the average ICU length of stay was only seven days. Uh, maximum was 15 days for one patient. And uh, three of them had a surgical indication, which is again the persistent bacterial uh, bacteremia, which is defined as uh, presence of the bacteria in the blood culture, even more than after five days of uh, starting of the antibiotic. Coming to the mortality outcomes, uh, in this case series, the pregnant uh, ladies, none of them had any mortality. And the, coming to the obstetric outcomes among this one, only one only one patient had an indication for C-section because of the fatal bradycardia. And the average weight, uh, birth weight in all of them was uh, uh, preterm. The mostly uh, the shortest was of the uh, one, one kg. Uh, coming to the treatment, other uh, treatment course in a, a pregnant uh, patients, we, uh, we even uh, included, uh, went into uh, search for the uh, intravenous versus conversion of the oral antibiotics. But uh, this, looking at this trail, we found out that it is a non infillate trail. So uh, in our patient, uh, we decided to continue the uh, continuous IV uh, antibiotics. And uh, further course in our IV patient, the main problem for our patient was she was uh, intubated and she developed a VAP after 48 hours of uh, intubation. So initially when the uh, cardiologist has come for the, uh, doing a bedside echo, uh, it was uh, very difficult because the patient was in pro prone position. She developed a VAP and then we had to treat to the VAP and, and then uh, again, uh, multiple times cardiologists have to come and do the echo in the uh, SSU and NMICU. Uh, but since it's in MSSA, uh, we continued. Uh, we, our plan was to continue the uh, cloxacillin uh, IV for six weeks. And she was just shifted out of the ICU two days ago, and she's currently febrile. And uh, multiple cultures, more than four blood cultures uh, taken after the start of the antibiotics, which are uh, negative now. And yesterday, thoracic surgery has been called, and uh, she has been advised for a surgery. Uh, but the family wanted to decide and uh, uh, take time to uh, go ahead for the surgery because she's currently not fit for the surgery. So learning points uh, from this patient is the treatment is the same in both the pregnant and the non-pregnant ladies, but uh, other learning point was a multidisciplinary team approach is most helpful in reducing the mortality because the patient, uh, uh, in our patient, and as we have seen, the patient was actually initially seen by the obstetrician immediately. Uh, SSU did a good job in picking up a bedside. They, uh, they did a, the registers over there did a bedside echo and found a vegetation on day two of admission. Immediately, multiple times, cardiologists have come and referred uh, and have seen the patient and they have given their opinion. And ID was also approached for the antibiotic plan. Uh, uh, the biggest learning point uh, from this thing is never give up and uh, a multiple disciplinary team approach is always helpful. Uh, that is why the title, the weight, even though the heart is broken, the weight is uh, so, so much that it cannot be broken fully. Anybody wants to ask him anything? Uh, blood cultures are based on microbiological uh, criteria. If they are typical or if the more than two cultures are, two or more than two cultures are uh, showing for a typical organism or more than three cultures for an atypical organism. And uh, if echo is not done, we can, we can would have gone for a transesophageal echo also. If the clinical suspicion of infective endocarditis is high. Criteria name? 2023 revised modified criteria. EIS. Does she have underlying rheumatic heart disease or is it the bitter variant? She doesn't have a history of uh, uh, underlying rheumatic heart disease. Uh, Echocardiogram friend showed a vegetation of four, 14 into 3 mm uh, in the mitral valves or near the mitral valve. There's no uh, mitral wall collapse. Leaflet near there. There was no regurgitation. No regurgitation. We have a mid step cardiologist to show him that picture. Ashwin is still requesting.
She did not admit under us. Outside only. No, no. No. She is from Ambur. Ambur runs. In a government. How pregnant is she? Eight weeks. <laughs> Eight weeks. So your theory is that she had uh, been uh, hiding and using drugs. No. <laughs> Did she? Hundred percent of the patients with MSSA endocarditis are drug users. Those are all other outside uh, Indian studies. Obviously, it's related to the blood transfusion. But her symptoms were there even before the blood was transfusion. So, like two to yes. That could be a possibility. But history again, clinically, she had the symptoms even before she spot. It was already done outside. Only we did a, again we did a manual evacuation because she was in septic shock. Only some uh, very little help. It was not such. No. In her, uh, uh, because there's no battery in here, but she's more prone to develop a heart failure, is what the cardiologist says. What is the size of this? 14 mm, 1.4. Do, do you want to tell us where you would consider quick surgery in infective endocarditis? The Probably in the bedside, you should know all that. The patients are uh, having a uh, paravalvular abscess or persistent bacteremia or they are having a heart failure. Developing okay. a heart the failure. commonest one you would see is cardiac failure. Then mechanical complications like paravalvular leak, abscess, perforation and things like that. Okay, persistent bacteremia. Somebody is not clearing despite anything else. So the best protection against embolization is antibiotic therapy. So if you go on to embolize despite therapy, then those people should be considered. So those are the common ones. Anything else I have missed? Anyone? Uh, root abscess, some uh, mechanical complication like that. No, usually not. Uh, because, uh, uh, but so you could consider difficult to treat organisms like fungus or a very resistant organism, which is reasonably large in size for a uh, stick. So I'm still stuck at her pregnancy. So she was eight weeks pregnant. She went and had an abortion. It's is that what it is? No, sir. She developed hydrate fever and suddenly developed a PV bleeding. Event. Okay. Okay. Was there a, was this infection related to an attempted abortion? That's what I'm trying to get at. She partially uh, underwent treatment elsewhere before coming to us, but there were no documents. She's a married lady. Yes. Sir. Okay. Sure. She developed a PV bleeding inside. Two months ago, from February. Two months of fever. Then she went, uh, got evaluated, uh, went for an evaluation found to be anemic. Then uh, she was instantly found to be uh, pregnant also. Like one month later, after the blood transfusion, one month later, she had a sudden onset of a PV bleeding. And How was she diagnosed with They did a new PT when the first time she went because she was having a missed cycle. Her last LMP was on 28th. Yeah. Yes. That is where we. Maybe not very important. The definition of persistent bacteremia is not five days so now it looks like even after 24 hours of antibiotic therapy if you grow the organism it would be persistent so that concept you might have to just tweak
Anything else to him specifically? Thanks so much. Then, of course, the people who stole the show today is our interns. Is it very clear? <laughs>